make that turn. Hey guys, Matt the Greeter here. Yeah, that's a weird turn in both directions. Because traffic, there's a lot of variables there. You got traffic, which doesn't know what to do. Well, I've approached that intersection from multiple angles, and you've seen, there is no good way to approach that intersection. But also, you got like, it's a hairpin turn, but there's, there's, a, there's a pretty good change of elevation, which doesn't really show up on the on the camera what's up and uh makes it a little bit tricky and, and you also get people hugging though they're like actually coming over the the double yellow line there so this i usually avoid that intersection but i'm planning my route in my head right now and uh, i was started my planning ahead of that intersection normally i go out of my way to avoid it because it stinks <clears throat> Anyway, today I'm riding over to uh, old Quincy, city of Quincy, city of uh, city of presidents, Granite City, and uh, got to run an errand. So it's a little bit of a hike. It's not really yeah, okay. Let me qualify that. Quincy is not far from where I live, but the traffic and obstacles in between where I live, actually, the traffic and obstacles between where I live and everywhere else in, in the world is is uh, is the problem, really. So, if it wasn't for, you know, the, the incredible amount of traffic around here, th there's no end to where you could get in a hurry around here. Boston, obviously, is right up the street. Um, Quincy's next door um, to Boston. Uh, Plymouth, sure. New Hampshire, yeah. Cape Cod, absolutely. But it's those 45 billion automobiles, you know, on cell phones, going through road construction sites. That's that's the real issue here. So anyway, I'm trying to plan my route to minimize. I know um, Furnace Book Parkway is under ridiculous construction right now, and it's like so we're dropping lanes and doing this and that and in some cases at high rates of speed. So that's not appealing on a motorcycle, unless it's all other motorcycles around. But, uh, but uh, such is not the case, alas. So, uh, and I'm tr trying to think, do I wanna go back roads? I could just do, I could just do some back roads. And, uh, but the back roads are all busy too. Uh, but the highway, it's Labor Day today, as of the filming of this. So people are, uh, so yesterday when everybody's supposed to be where they're at, um, traffic was incredible. Tons of it. So it was like, but it was like a weird time. So there's really no end to the traffic either. So long, short story long, I seem to say that a lot. I think my former teachers would agree. Short story long. I'm not really sure how I want to get to Quincy today. So I'm just talking my way through parts of it. And, uh, and then I'll just go <laughs> whichever routes are left after I'm done, after I'm done flapping my gums here. I like this Quonset hut here. Check it out. Yeah, that's really cool. I've been inside there. Uh, oh, and I put this delicately. I used to know the guy that lived there. It's uh, really, it's like, you know, Doctor Who's phone booth? You step inside and all of a sudden it's enormous. So that Quonset hut doesn't look like much from the outside. I mean, his neighbors didn't like it, but uh, but man, I think it's awesome. It's from Canada, so you know it's built well, right? And uh, you know it's gonna slough the snow off real well too. And when you, as soon as you walk in that door, it's brightly lit, plenty of room, and uh, man, I just really like it. <clears throat> it may not look appealing to the neighbors, but dude, come on, you're worried about looking appealing here? Look at this plastic fence we're about to pass. Look at all the plastic, right? You're worried about a, a, a metal Quonset hut not looking appealing? Look at this. <laughs> this is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And, and that's all gonna be floating, you know, in the water off the Philippines at some point because people don't recycle or do whatever. It's ridiculous. Man, I don't know. I don't know. So that's not what I wanted to talk about today, but but holy cow. So we talk uh, I want to talk about contradictory behavior like 
everybody there is no secret if you live on planet earth there is no there's no two ways about it we have a tremendous problem with plastics in the world today it was uh something that was supposed to be super convenient blah 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 and this and that and it has been but there's no way to get rid of it now none what's up dude so i think that was a royal enfield very cool all right my mood has improved royal enfield uh we're talking england also lots of them were made uh in india <clears throat> and uh st i believe still are uh we know triumph pretty well around here royal enfield was that a Himalayan? Royal Enfield Himalayan? Um, Girl on Himalayan was one of the first uh, Instagram accounts I followed. So it's, it's a girl, she was, I believe, from India, and she took a Himalayan motorcycle all, all down Route 66 and documented her, uh, her travels. It was fascinating and wonderful and terrific. And the community that was built around her channel and her experiences was was really great you know and and uh, I think she met someone got married and I think she lives in the United States now girl on Himalayan uh, you know I don't know if you can see those old travels but but go check her out give her a follow you know, tell her Matt the greeter sent you I don't know if she she got 200 billion people that click on her stuff but you know if you say it enough people will start to know know who I, I do comment and uh, and uh, and stuff on a lot of people's videos so it, it is that is kind of one of those weird one of those weird things it's not really a relationship but like I think about Rick Beato people like that um, blockhead uh, shade tree surgeon uh, channels like that get a lot of very regular commenters and contributors you know uh, in the comment section and, and share people who share the videos and so you get to know everybody's names use the same people are comment and you can kind of comment back and forth and get a little a little repartee going and um, and it's funny because you never see them you never meet them <laughs> and, and probably never will so so do you know each other really I don't know anyway I don't know. So what am I what am I proposing? We build fewer plastic fences for one. It's easy, right? But build, this here's a wooden one, right? Plant some trees, build a wooden fence, and you know what? You paint it once in a while. And and taking care of it, I feel like is earning it in a way. You you can have it if you agree to take care of it. Now the plastic fence, people put it up and and they just never think about it again. It's somebody else's problem down the road. So, I don't know. It's not like you can burn a painted wooden fence after because burning the paint ain't good for the environment either. <sighs> well, now in New England we do have the stone wall. So, does it really come, does it really come down to that? Does it really come down to think about I don't want this to be a, a, a an episode of negativity so let's talk about Robert Frost's mending wall for a minute so oh no it's poetry there go the subscribers <laughs> thanks it's been it's been real thank you um, Robert Frost wrote a poem called mending wall many of you have been forced by horrible teachers with coffee breath and chalk in their hair um, to read uh, Mending Wall by Robert Frost and basically the premise of the poem is you know you get people who they share a wall a, st a stone wall between their fields between actually between um, tree between orchards so but in winter as you know if you're from New England or if you don't know it rains it gets snowy then stuff sort of melts in all the crevices and cracks of of the area and then when it freezes stuff breaks apart stone walls like bits of 
the walls will like tumble. The rocks will tumble off the walls. Your driveway splits, the roads split. The world just starts to fracture and split because the water gets in, it expands when it freezes and things break apart. So every year, these two, well, let's call them farmers just for the sake of it. These two farmers have to, they meet together in the middle. They meet at the wall. Why? To talk, hey, how's the winter? How'd the winter go? How you do? No. They meet to put the wall back up between themselves, between each other. Because, you know, to spoil the, uh, the grand finale, good fences make good neighbors. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Good fences make good neighbors. So sometimes it's good to meet, if only to put that wall back up between you. <laughs> But, if you put a plastic fence up, you never have to meet. When you've put a stone wall back together with somebody, you've met an, uh, uh, an activity of mutual respect. You've worked and sweated together to create something, even if it is a wall. But that dude on the other side has a heart attack, or that dude on the other side has a loss or, or a crop fails you don't have to meet him you know him you've worked together you've put up a wall together you can you can bring him some food you can bring him some crops of your own you can you can help out because you have a relationship even if it is a relationship of building walls if you never work together, you put the plastic fence up, the dude on the other side has a, has a big issue, you don't ever hear about it. And then somebody else moves in. Maybe you have a property dispute. <laughs> Who knows, man. But sometimes meeting together in conflict is better than, than never meeting at all. At least that's how I see it. Because they weren't lobbing rocks at each other's house. They weren't doing this, doing that. They were meeting together. I don't know, man. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Good fences make good neighbors. And when those fences come down, if you've built them together, you know, you at least have that mutual respect. And I would bet, you build a fence, you build a, ugh, you build a wall with somebody, and, and some, something comes in from the outside that threatens one of you, I bet you're, I bet you're right there, side by side, to defend against that. I guess that's what I'm getting at. You may agree to stay apart, but when, when it comes down to it, when, when that something comes in that doesn't belong or that shouldn't be there, that hostile force or whatever, or that illness, that terrible time, that house fire, you can stand together against that. All right, guys. Hey, she's going to give the finger to that guy because she went through a stop sign. They ought to build a wall together. <laughs> hey, I'm Matt the Greeter. I'll check in with you soon. Hey, let's try to make it positive. Leave a positive comment. Let's, let's turn this ship around, huh? All right, guys, I care about you. I'll check in with you soon. Bye.